Okay, I know I haven't been keeping up on the Lord of the Rings spoilers, but with how expensive the set seems to be right now, I'm not all that excited to jump in on the hype train. That was until this bad boy popped up. Shelob, Child of Ungoliant is the latest step towards every Magic player's dream of putting together a spider tribal deck that might actually have legs. <laughs> It's an 8-8 legendary spider demon with death touch and ward 2 for 4 black green. It says other spiders you control have death touch and ward 2. And whenever another creature dealt damage this turn by a spider you control dies, create a token that's a copy of that creature, except it's a food artifact with pay 2, tap, and sack it to gain 3 life. The copy also loses all other card types. I absolutely love the flavor of this card because it kills its prey and wraps it up to eat it later. It's way too good to ignore. It also creates a copy of the destroyed creature creating a pseudo theft game plan that turns your opponent's best creature abilities against them. The automatic strategy here is to include cards that will let your spiders deal direct damage to your opponent's creatures, killing them off. Arc Spitter, Pathway Arrows, Sorcerer's Wand, Viridian Longbow, and of course Thornbite Staff will all do this job wonderfully. However, it might also be worth it to include green cards like Bite Down and Cosmic Hunger that will let a creature deal damage to another creature. Fight effects are fine, but you'll lose your spiders, so they'll be less effective without a strong token strategy. Out of the 66 spiders we have available, there are only 7 that will make spider tokens. Arasta of the Endless Web, Brood Weaver, Dryder, Ishkana Graph Widow, Penumbra Spider, Rot Widow Pack, and Twin Silk Spider are those spiders. Outside of spider cards, we have Arachnogenesis, Curse of Clinging Webs, Spider Spawning, and Lolf Spider Queen that will all add to the number of spiders you can swarm your opponents with. The best non-token spiders for our deck are probably ones that can deal damage to other creatures without help. Silk Lash Spider will deal X damage to each creature with flying for X and 2 green. Imagine throwing this down for 5 and then paying 3 to kill off an Ur Dragon board to create food copies of all of those dragons. Chain Web Arachnir isn't a bad choice since you can kill off one creature and later in the game bring it back with Escape to do it again. After that, it's just a matter of including the most mana efficient spiders along with ways to benefit from their death touch. Maybe throw in Finn the Fangbearer to force your opponents to block or become poisoned by all of your death touching spiders. Tribute to the World Tree will make sure all of your spiders are bigger threats since they often have a weaker power and a fat toughness. Unfortunately, since green is primarily the color of spiders and it's a lesser supported tribe, black becomes more of a support color and decks will end up simply using black staples that will help the deck deal with opponent's creatures or fuel the deck. And then the rest of the green slots will be filled up with green staples just as much. There isn't going to be a lot of variety with shallop decks, but this is by far the coolest and most effective spider commander we have ever had. I don't know if I'll actually build it myself, but it's very cool just the same. Let me know what you think of shallop child of Ungoliant in the comments below. There are a few other cards I want to talk about for the 99 of my own decks, so that'll come out after we work through the pre-cons of the set through the chop shop, so look forward to that. But until then, like the video if you liked the video, dislike it if you disliked it, and until next time, I'm Space Coconut, and you're welcome.